This is the second installment in a three-part video series where I debunk arguments against gay marriage that are either deceptive or erroneous. I'll be tackling each one and pointing out where the problems lie in each argument. I'd like to give each one its due time as there are so many of them, which is why I'm making three videos, where I'll tackle four or five arguments at a time. Some would like you to believe that gay marriage would somehow threaten straight marriage. The only threat that straight marriage faces from making gay marriage legal is that it would become an institution that is also available to gay people. In other words, they would have to share. This is one of the more irrational claims. People say it as if by making gay marriage legal, it would somehow make straight marriage invalid. The fact of the matter is that gay marriage changes nothing about straight marriage. The real issue here is that opponents of gay marriage feel that gays being allowed to marry will taint marriage. This is an obvious display of the true feelings of gay marriage opponents, that gays are lesser than straights. And this is really what it all boils down to. Human rights. Just because two people want to marry that you think shouldn't, doesn't make those people any less human than you are or any less deserving of the same rights that you enjoy. Which brings me to my next point. There are people who state that allowing gay marriage would be giving gays special rights. The chant, gay rights equals special rights, has been shouted out by the anti-gay crowd for as long as gays and lesbians have been looking for equal rights. No matter how loud or how often you say something, its truthfulness doesn't change. It's simple to see, after looking just below the surface of this argument, that it's completely fallacious. Straight people are allowed to marry the person they love. Gay people aren't. Who has the special rights here? The answer is so simple a child could see it. This is an old tactic. Accuse your opponent of what you are guilty of, and they will be so busy defending themselves that no one will notice your sins. Sometimes this argument follows with, if we allow gays to get married, we'll have to allow child molesters, polygamists, those into bestiality, etc., etc. No supporting evidence is ever given. They only proclaim it as if that alone will make it so. This is another slippery slope argument, which I'll tackle a little later, but the word to keep in mind in this situation is consent. Animals and children can't give their consent, and with a polygamous marriage, consent and other legal issues would make plural marriage extremely impractical in the legal sense. During the November 2008 campaign in California to vote Prop 8 into law, one of the many lies told by the religious right was that if Prop 8 didn't pass, they would start teaching about gay marriage to children in kindergarten. This is just flat out false, and it shows to what great lengths these quote-unquote moral people are willing to go to, to prevent gays from having the same right of marriage that they enjoy. The fact is, there's nothing in making gay marriage legal that would make any primary school teach about it to children who are too young to understand, or without the consent of the parents. This tactic is designed to feed on a parent's fear that children will be taught about sex before they're old enough to handle it. They also feed on people's fear that gays and lesbians are recruiting through the school system, which is another lie spread by the anti-gay marriage crowd. In actuality, the school curriculum will not change in the least bit, save maybe a few high school classes where it could possibly be discussed, but only as a current events topic. As promised, I'm going to tackle the slippery slope argument. This one goes as follows. If we allow gays to be married, then the next thing you know, we'll have to let people marry their pets, or their plant, or their kids, etc. This is called the slippery slope argument, since the argument implies that going down one path will be a dangerous path to tread, and we could slide down to a place we don't want to be. But the slippery slope argument is a logical fallacy unless you give proof as to why one would lead to another. In the case of gay marriage, none is ever given. It's just assumed that A leads to B leads to X, Y, or Z. The problem here is this. In order for someone to marry anything other than an adult human being, we would have to take the concept of consent out of marriage, which is, of course, completely ludicrous. This would cause disorder, whereas society always moves toward order, which is what legalizing gay marriage does, brings order to same-sex relationships. Gay relationships happen whether conservatives like it or not. Marriage only removes the problem of having to go through several steps of paperwork that straight couples can achieve with only one step and receive more benefits. On a side note, People using this argument love to use bestiality and pedophilia as the things that would naturally occur after gay marriage. It's partly a way to compare gay marriage to things that people think are disturbing, 
but also it's a way of dehumanizing gays by comparing them to animals and child molesters. The reason we find these things disturbing is because, as said before, animals and children aren't able to give consent. Marriage, or any contract for that matter, can only be between consenting adults. Legalizing gay marriage won't change that. In 1962, Illinois repealed their sodomy laws through legislative action. Following the next two decades, 23 states followed suit, and then 11 more, the District of Columbia and Puerto Rico from 1989 to 2002. In 2003, the U.S. Supreme Court decision in Lawrence v. Texas invalidated sodomy laws in the remaining states. Sodomy usually refers to any sexual act that cannot result in procreation. However, it is rarely applied to heterosexual couples. Some people, mostly in the 16 holdout states, believe that sodomy should have never been legalized and that legalizing gay marriage would only legitimize a practice that in their minds should be criminal. The 14th Amendment of the Constitution is generally considered to grant U.S. citizens the right to privacy, and the Supreme Court declared that sexual acts between consenting adults are included within the right to privacy. So sodomy laws absolutely should have been decriminalized. In fact, it should have never been illegal in the first place, and even bringing it up is a red herring. Well, that's it for this video, but I've got another video with four more arguments, plus my own argument for gay marriage to come, so stay tuned.